Hello! In this video, we are going to take a look at uh, some of the exploratory data analysis capabilities of the DataGrog platform with the emphasis on uh, data visualizations. Obviously, uh, data analysis starts with uh, importing the data. In our case, we'll just uh, drag and drop uh, the CSV file uh, from our disk into the platform and less than a second later, it's uh, opened. It's not a big file, it has roughly uh, 6,000 rows and 10 columns, uh, but it will give you uh, an idea of uh, how performant the platform is. So right after the platform is open, uh, you see a spreadsheet. Uh, and uh, by just uh, hovering the mouse over the columns, uh, you see a short summary of the column. For instance, if you hover over a numerical column, you'll see a histogram uh, also with a number of uh, empty uh, values. And when you hover the mouse over the categorical columns, uh, we can see a number of uh, different categories uh, sorted by the uh, number of rows that fall into that particular category. And this has been uh, our overall uh, philosophy to present the uh, user with the relevant uh, data. The interface is uh, pretty intuitive. So whenever you click on something, typically you would see its properties on the right side. And for instance, if you click on a column, it's possible to uh, drill down to its properties uh, and see all sorts of uh, statistics and other things. As you can see, the data we opened represents uh, the data from the clinical study, where each row represents a subject and there are 10 columns uh, containing its uh, attributes. So let's try to uh, visualize this data set. Let's start with one of the more traditional viewers, a scatter plot. As you can see, there are typically no uh, dialogues, uh, nothing at all. Uh, when you add a viewer, the picture appears. Uh, more than that, it's uh, quite interactive. So for instance, if we want to change uh, the color of a viewer, we would just uh, start choosing categories and note uh, that I'm not even clicking or anything. The picture changes as soon as I move the mouse. So let's uh, visualize it like that. Uh, same applies to uh, all, all selectors. We can also change uh, things on uh, axis as well. It's pretty performant. Uh, so you can uh, zoom in at any time or uh, reset view. Uh, also, it uh, synchronizes with the grid. So uh, if you click on a marker, uh, corresponding points uh, point lights up on the grid and uh, vice versa. We can also select a number of points on a scatter plot. We can do it by holding shift and dragging the mouse. And the corresponding records uh, get highlighted uh, in a grid. Obviously, it also works the other way around. So let's add a few more viewers, uh, a histogram and let's say a bar chart and let's see what's happening. Huh. So out of the box, uh, uh, you would notice that uh, whenever uh, we hover the mouse over uh, a segment on a plot that represents multiple points, they get highlighted in uh, all the viewers which uh, is an extremely powerful capability uh, because you would uh, notice pattern not even uh, looking for them. Of course, the row selection is uh, synchronized between multiple viewers as well. So you can uh, select stuff on uh, any of the viewers and uh, everything will get uh, reflected on other viewers. The same concept applies to filters. To add uh, filters, we can uh, do it by clicking on that small icon on the toolbox. And now we have uh, a bunch of uh, controls for filtering the data set. The left column with uh, the blue bars represents uh, the ratio 
of the filtered records that fall into the corresponding uh, category. So for instance, right now, but by just uh, sliding the filter for age, uh, I can sort of see the dynamics of uh, how different uh, races, sexes and diseases uh, depend on uh, the age. Let's clear the filter by pressing uh, escape. Pressing escape the second time clears the selection as well. And let's uh, filter uh, categorical values. So you will do that by simply clicking on the category and that selects uh, one category exclusively, which makes it uh, real easy to filter stuff like uh, females, Caucasian uh, with uh, indigestion, things like that. Uh, or we can also uh, click on the individual uh, boxes and uh, toggle them, and this will control which uh, categories uh, pass filter and which uh, do not. There are multiple ways you can control the filter. One of them is the filter group that we just uh, looked at. By the way, note that uh, the filter description is uh, on the property panel, so you can always see what is uh, getting filtered. Uh, another way to do it is uh, by uh, using uh, built-in filters in the grid. So you would click on the small hamburger icon that shows up when you hover over the column, and uh, you can filter stuff like that. Also, some of the viewers, uh, such as uh, histogram or uh, parallel coordinates plot, uh, provide their own filters. So you can filter right uh, from here. They are synchronized with the rest of the filters and they work together quite nicely. Whenever the filter is changed, you would see context actions uh, on the property panel that are applicable to the filtered rows. So for instance, we can uh, extract these rows and do further processing with them. And uh, same concept applies to selected rows. So we can select stuff and uh, extract or delete uh, and proceed further. There are a few ways you can uh, change uh, properties of uh, the viewer. Most uh, of the common properties are available right from the surface via column selectors and uh, things like that. Uh, but also if you click on that uh, settings icon, a special uh, property panel dialog uh, shows up where uh, all the properties are grouped nicely by uh, categories. Uh, and uh, typically you would immediately see the change uh, as you change uh, the property. Many viewers also support uh, changing properties uh, from the pop-up menu. For instance, you can uh, change uh, marker size interactively uh, right from here. There are some common uh, actions that are applicable to all viewers. So they can be found by clicking on that uh, hamburger icon on the top uh, left corner and going under the uh, viewer submenu. So, for instance, uh, you can clone the viewer, and this uh, clones uh, all the properties as well, so the viewers are identical. Uh, you can save it to gallery or embed it, uh, so that later you can paste it uh, into a separate web page. And there are uh, other things you might want to try with the viewer, such as opening it up uh, in a full screen or uh, using in uh, trellis, uh, which is actually a, quite a powerful concept. It allows you to define columns uh, by which uh, the data is split. So let me make this viewer uh, bigger. So, uh, for instance, if I want to see uh, how our data looks like uh, in the context of uh, sex versus race, I would close it like that. So we have two different uh, sexes on x-axis and all the races are on the y-axis. 
and then uh, I can select uh, uh, the viewer to visualize and uh, any viewer will do so uh, bar chart or uh, histogram scatter plot uh, anything it's quite useful for uh, visual interrogation of data there are multiple ways to share a view that you've built uh, first of all uh, you might want to share it uh, together with the data and uh, this is called a project to uh, share a project first you have to upload it during the publishing step this platform asks you exactly which uh, tables and views you want to share so we've created uh, quite uh, a number of views during our exploration so i've just deleted them from the project they are still in the workplace but we will not be sharing them as part of the project and let's uh, give it some uh, meaningful name and uh, upload it it only takes a second uh, also a dialog pops up uh, asking you to share the project by default uh, it is uh, only accessible to you but you can share it with a team or with uh, the public it's uh, totally up to you so once uh, a project is shared uh, it can be opened by uh, double clicking on it uh, of course you have to find it in the uh, dataset projects and uh, it opens uh, in exactly the same way we left it you might also want to reuse just the layout from the view, with view without the data so that uh, you or uh, someone else will be later able to apply the same uh, visual uh, layout the same viewers against the new data set of the same structure to do that you might want to do a uh, view layout uh, save to gallery uh, once uh, this is done uh, you can open a gallery or at some uh, later point actually let's close uh, everything and uh, let's reopen the same file uh, let's present it's a new data set uh, now we can go to layout open gallery and uh, our layout uh, will be here and just uh, clicking on it uh, brings it up uh, it's a pretty powerful concept individual viewers can also be saved uh, to a gallery and can later be uh, added from there let's close the gallery individual viewers can also be annotated in different ways uh, for instance you might want to enter a title uh, which would appear on top uh, or uh, you can also edit uh, the description uh, which uh, supports markdown format so uh, we can create uh, titles bullet points stuff like that uh, should start with an asterisk this is it for our introductory video as you can see we've only scratched the tip of the iceberg please check out our other videos for uh, the overviews of uh, individual viewers as well as for other advanced topics of uh, on visualization thank you